This episode brought to you by MeepleRealty.com, your source for high-quality custom board game inserts. Meeple Realty, think inside the box. Hey everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we're bringing you a preview of a Kickstarter currently in the middle of its campaign called Dwarves Dig, Delve, Die. Now, this is a dice game. It's a, um, I suppose, dice placement game. Uh, it's a fairly small game, but at the same time has that worker placement slash dice placement aspect to it. I, I think it's something you might find interesting. So we're going to show you exactly how to play Dwarves Dig, Delve, Die. Oh, and of course, before we start this how to play portion of this video, let me be clear that obviously everything you see here are prototypes. The cards are print and play that have been slipped into sleeves with regular playing cards. The gold that you'll see is from Pandemic and the dice are from Dead of Winter. So none of these components are at all representative of the final product. Also, if you'd like to skip straight to my preview thoughts, you can find a link for that in the description below. In Dwarves Dig, Delve, Die, the goal is to be the first player to have five pieces of gold. Throughout the game, players will gain dice which represent Dwarven miners. This deck of cards is the mine players will be mining in their quest for gold. To set up the game, first locate the Delve and Dig card and remove it from the deck placing it to the left of the deck in the play space. Next, shuffle the mine and place it face down within reach of all players. Finally, all players take one dwarf from the general supply and randomly choose the first player. And that's the setup. Now you're ready to begin playing. On a player's turn, she'll first take one new dwarf from the supply and then roll all of her dwarves. If there happened to be no dwarves in the supply at the time, the player would have skipped that step and continued on with the rest of her turn. After rolling her dwarves, the player must now assign all of her dwarves to any of the current face-up cards. To assign dwarves to face-up cards, the player must follow a few simple rules. The player may stack multiple dwarves on the same card or on different cards. When stacking dwarves on top of each other, the player must stack a dwarf on top of another dwarf of equal or lesser value. Finally, there may be no more than a single stack of dwarves per card. However, there is no maximum height for the stack. It's important to note that if possible, all dwarves must be placed even if the player does not necessarily want to. For instance, not stacking this two and putting the four and the six out here, leaving the two unstacked would not be a legal move. Sometimes, based on dwarves previously played, a player may find she is unable to place all of her dwarves. In this case, the player can only place the four and there's no place for the two to go. In this case, the unplaced dwarves are returned to the general supply. Also, certain effects will kill dwarves such as the Balrog and this cave-in card. When that happens, any dwarves killed are returned to the general supply. Once a player's dwarves are placed, the player enters the dig phase. In the dig phase, the player must first identify which stack of dwarves has the lowest valued dwarf on top. The dwarf then digs at that location. In this case, the lowest valued dwarf is this two, so the delve and dig location will be dug. To dig, the player removes the digging dwarf and leaves any other dwarves in the stack. The removed dwarf belongs to the player now and will be used on her next turn. The card from which the dwarf was removed now activates and the player must follow the instructions of that card. If the delve and dig card is resolved by a digging dwarf, the player draws the top card of the mine, resolves it immediately, and places it in the first available space to the right of the mine. The first card drawn will be placed immediately to the right of the mine. The next card will be to the right of that card, and the next card to the right of that card, and so on. 
It's possible multiple stacks will have the lowest value dwarf. In this case, resolve each stack one at a time from left to right. Finally, it's important to note that a player will never resolve more than one number per turn. Sometimes effects may change the value of one or more dwarves during a dig. For instance, here, these two threes are the lowest numbers, and so they will resolve. However, the Titan Forge will activate first, and its ability sets all top dwarves to rank one. Regardless of the change in values, the player will only resolve the original number she began resolving. And since there are no more threes on the board, no more cards will be resolved by the player this turn. And now let's take a look at all the different cards that will be in the deck. First, we have Delve and Dig. Reveal and resolve one new card. Next, Balrog Pit. Kill the tallest dwarf stack. And in the case of the Balrog, if there are multiple tallest dwarf stacks, it kills all of them. The Cave-In, return all cards to the deck. This does not include the Delve and Dig card. Cache of Golden Ale, all players gain one gold. Dragon's Lair, all players lose one gold. Dwarven Mine, gain one gold. And currently there are two of these cards in the game. Goblin Warrens, steal one gold. And this means you can steal one gold from any player. Iron Army, take two dwarves from anywhere. And when that card says anywhere, it means anywhere. Players, cards, supply, anywhere you choose. Orc Blockade, reverse the turn order. Relic of Power, choose effect of any location. This essentially allows you to activate any card you wish. Tavern of Legend. Next player gains two gold. Be careful activating that one by accident. Titan Forge. Set all top dwarves to rank one. Throne of Kings. Roll and add two dice to the mines. And it's important to note that any dwarves added to stacks with the throne must still follow the normal stacking rules. So there you have it. That's how you play Dwarves Dig, Delve, Die. Not a whole lot of rules to go with this game. I have to say, I've, I've played it, uh, an actual game of it once so far. I've played around with it quite a bit. Played an actual game of it once so far. It played very quickly and was a lot of fun with the way it's set up right now. Now, obviously, cards can change. Rules can be tweaked, all that kind of stuff. Uh, from what I understand, they are in a fairly final state right now in terms of what's written on the card and uh, how the rules work so I don't expect to see a whole lot of change there as the game stands right now if uh, you know I, I feel like this is something that uh, you could probably easily I'm guessing it's gonna be in a small package you can easily take this wherever you go this is one that right now just eat in this prototype form I have been wanting to play again since I got that initial play and I've, I've just been so busy with life I it was two days ago that I played the, the one time and just have not been able to play again you know having people over or whatever and um, this is one I actually find myself thinking about throughout the day wanting to try again and, and see what sort of uh, real strategy I can find in there um, when you're initially are thinking about it, you, you don't necessarily think that there's a whole lot of choices, but, but what you have to realize is that as you're playing, when because you, you're only taking the top dwarf off these stacks, and so that means that the stacks are going to kind of, initially you have like a dwarf left behind. Well, then there's, that's slowly going to start building up, and you're going to have more and more dwarves, and the stacks are going to, since you're only taking the lowest rolled stack, the stacks are going to have uh, slowly built up on them higher and higher dwarves. And as more and more cards come out, and then, oh, do I keep trying to dig? Uh, and there's a cave-in. And then sometimes you roll in such a way that you have no choice what's going to happen. The lowest die might already be on the board. And so now you got to place these two, two or three or however many high dice. And at that point, um, you know, your, what's, what's happening has already been decided for you. And so there's that aspect of it where sometimes you have no choice, but other times, but you know what, even in that case, you still have to strategically place the high dice because 
Do you place them in a, in on uh, cards in an effort to prevent the next player from being able to use certain cards? Or do you place them in places that uh, they're going to be least likely to interfere with you the next time? Because most of the time, the cards the other players want to use are probably the same cards you want to use as well. A lot of cool choices in this game for such a small game. You saw, I, what, there was like 14, I'm not sure how many cards, 12, 14 cards, something like that. A lot of cool choices. Um, really cool idea. I'm excited to play more of this. If you think it's something you might be interested in, go over to the Kickstarter. Go check it out. See what you think. They've got a, a cool little video there of them playing it. You know, the whatever you call it these days. What is it? A trailer? for? I don't know if board games have trailers. Point is, go check it out. Click on the link below. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of the same stuff. Be sure to click on the bell, wherever that is, somewhere on the screen to get alerts for my channel every time I put up a new video. And until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline. <laughs>